Well, good afternoon again. It's me. I'm de still at Rob Andrews' place. Rob in the background. Give us a shout, Rob. Hello. Now, he's got another shed. You know I've been to all these other sheds and uh, he's still got plenty to do. But we're calling it a day today because we've got running out of SD cards. Anyway, let's get on with this video, shall we? And if you haven't already, think about subscribing to the channel. It doesn't cost you a penny. And I promise I'll keep it between me and you so no one else will know. And, uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up for me also. Anyway, let's get on, shall we? Well, Rob, we meet again, as yeah. that song goes. Another one of your... Uh, Collect part of your collections. What is it? So this is a 1929 Leyland SQ2 lorry. Right. Uh, basically a seven-ton lorry, uh, petrol engine. Uh, it's about nine liter petrol engine, um, straight four side valve, uh, and a whole 38 horsepower. 38 horses. 38 horsepower. Yeah. So um, it, it, yeah, there's a lot of torque. Doesn't rev much above sort of um, 1200 RPM, 1500 RPM. But it's all down the bottom end with this, uh, this lorry. But um, as rare as he goes, this is it. There is that's no. That's got other. a badge on the front of it as well. Yeah. What's the badge on the front of that's it? That's the uh, that's the um, Royal Crest for um, for Leyland, Leyland Motors. That's an original. That's not a repro because okay. uh, you can get reproduction ones. But that's an original one. So era wise, 1929. 1929. Yeah. So carried, was it farm work or was it? Basically this one worked um, with a trailer back in the day from, what's the docks up there? Birmingham to Liverpool docks. Oh, so, okay. and backwards um, carrying perishables. That's what it did for its early life. Um, it was a it was a fleet of 12, that's why this one's number four. And I've got the old photographs which show that number plate. Um, and this vehicle um, in the uh, you know in, in its uh, original working clothes and original, but this is how it looked. Mm. Um, Obviously, it wasn't like that when you got hold of it, was it? Yeah, I, I was lucky enough to buy this one like it. Really? Another accidental purchase. I just turned up at some place <laughs> at the right time, picking something else for someone else up. Um, you must have the most understanding wife in the whole <laughs> world. <laughs> As you said before, you go out for a tin of cat food or something, and you come back I with a boat. I can't go with the boat that's out in the field. Yeah, yeah that's, and that, that's probably, you go out every day, it, it, and you come back with something. Yeah, that's probably the worst one. Uh, I did buy a lorry. My, it's not here at the moment, but my big plant lorry, the DAF, the new one. Um, I did go all the way Just up another to, lorry, I suppose. Well, well, I went all the way up to uh, Clitheroe in Manchester to pick that up and got back at 11 o'clock. Didn't tell her where I was going, and then pulled up out, not this house, it was a previous one, pulled up outside. Oh, look what I've got. It just went... All right, and walk back in again. <laughs> that's that's where it's got to, <laughs> kind of thing. That's but no, she's very is. supportive. We said about that in the in the first video. Yeah, very yeah, supportive. Very supportive. So um, these headlights on the front end, they're, they're, they look a bit special, don't they? They're on like big cast iron brackets or something, aren't they? Yeah, so, so interesting features of this lorry. 1929, the electric lights had already come out on uh, on vehicles, but um, as you'll notice, these are actually. If I pop the front open on them. These are actually um, wicks, oh, okay. so they're actually an oil lamp, but it's got a bulb in the back. So this oh. has had um, what's called a Lucas conversion, a Lucas lighting conversion. Right. So they took um, these, which are the original paraffin lamps, and they put on these as well for these are your normal sort of driving lights and an electrical charging system. It's not got electric start. This, this is all off the handle. This one um, with the magneto, and you have to swing it over, and off she'll go. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, it's got a, a Lucas uh, conversion. The reason they did it was the, back in the day, the lorry drivers didn't trust the newer technology, so they didn't trust electric lights. So you had the best of both worlds. If it all went wrong in their eyes, you could light that and you'd still have um, you know, lights. The other ones at the back, you can't see it, but it's a smaller version of that which lights up the number plate and gives you one rear. Uh, well, I should take a leaf out of their book really, should I? Be prepared because mm. I haven't been today, it's just like for me, come straight here from somewhere else and uh, I didn't bring enough SD cards. Well there's a lot here, you know, you didn't know how much I've no. got because we've, we've met twice before haven't we, at the yeah. shows, uh, and you've seen bits but not the whole lot. Well I'm just blown away by it all. Right, let's, let's move inside, they're big cross, cross by tyres on the front of it, 
Okay. Now power steering on it or anything like that, is it Rob? No, no power steering. Um so yeah, it's all it's all heavy, uh yeah. Linkages. Linkages, yeah. It's, it's not too bad. I mean yes you do know you're driving it, it is a machine and it does weigh four tonne empty. Yeah. So you can feel it, it does give you a bit of a workout. Um in here you've got um cabless um sorry door uh, door there's no door tops ventilation literally done by opening the window at the yep. front there that that's your air conditioning it, in the does, day. it does work really well though is it even though this only does about 25 25 miles an hour 30 if you're really going to push it but 25 it will happily cruise along it that's enough to empty the hot air out of there because it's petrol engine oh, and you're okay. sitting on this, top of the engine on aren't top you? of the engine so this is one of the first uh, lorries to utilize forward um, cab over the engine oh, the okay. model before it had a normal length bonnet and you sat behind the engine but what you bought with the cab over the engine is more load space on the back oh, okay so um, that's what the americans call a cab over didn't they I yeah mean, cab over yeah so it's, it, it's semi so it's got a you know it, it's got a, a bit of a little nose, bit of a nose coming a bit out of a nose out, out the front i yep. really like the look of it that's what yeah so do i to it. Um, the square frontage of it but it's yep. still got some curves to it yes it has yeah but it gets very very hot in there brilliant in the winter yeah. absolutely crucifies you in the summer and whoever's sitting in the passenger seat wears it worse because that's where the exhaust manifold is and the whole engine really? cover sits slightly more over that side whereas here you've got a bit more room next to the driver and that's where my youngest usually sits next to me here really? um, i suppose back in the day they used to have donkey jackets and god knows what else to keep warm with yeah, at the time didn't yeah. they yeah because there's there's no windows there as it's like as you said quite rightly you, there's no side windows there you, it's always you can like, it has got up there on the top there you pop them in see these little poppers oh. and it's a side screen which goes in oh, okay. and it fills it up and you've got a, like a, a they're plastic windows um yeah they yeah you know the ones i mean um, yeah and that sat inside there so oh, okay. if, you know if it's raining it keeps it off of you, but yeah you've got a step on the uh front wheel arch obviously yeah. to step up one two there's one here okay so you sort of step from there yeah so you put your foot on there put your foot into there and then you're in into the cab into let's have a cab look let's see if i can squeeze in your cab uh handbrake in the way as usual wasn't it so, yeah that's your handbrake um there's your gear stick how many gears to that then Rob? Four. four gears yeah four in reverse um clutch and brake are here like a normal car but your accelerator is in the middle it's this little oh one here God. So center accelerator, yeah, which is a very old, you know, the old way of yeah. doing it. Um, fuel tank is there. Oh, so you're sitting on it. Then, isn't it. Yeah, it goes underneath here and comes across and all the way down to here. Oh my god! Miles per gallon. Gone four. Oh. That's all it'll do. But mind you, petrol back in 1929 was probably about yeah. a, pen, oh, a penny and the gallon, wasn't yeah, it? Like, they, you know? they didn't care back in them days. It, no. was, it was much cheaper, um, not yeah. like today. And the little uh, clocks you got on the side there? So, dials wise, all you've got is the top one there, that's engine oil pressure. Yep. Um, and that one there is part of the Lucas um, charging kit and that tells you <gasps> the, how much the dynamo is working and whether to turn the dynamo on and off and then the other two switches are the separate lights so your big ones on the front and then them carriage uh, lights as we said converted. originally yeah yeah um, up here you've got ignition timing um, that's the start that's put the magneto into start position and this is a hand throttle now they that to the uninitiated they talk about advancing and, and retarding of yep bits and pieces so what it, what it, where do you put it when you're gonna start so it's in in this position that's fully retarded right so, fully the, retarded. so, the, um, so the sparks delayed yes it's it's delayed um, to top dead center so the pistons coming up to the top of its travel yep. it ignites it and because you're swinging it over then enough it'll then carry the engine over as soon as it's fired and begin to warm up you can advance this up and you'll hear the engine completely change and really? you'll get a lot more power out of it and, and the note of the engine so changes. just out. after top dc that's it she fires mm -hmm. oh, and then okay. you uh, when it's running you advance it so you can go up it's, it's variable so you can depend on what you're doing with it yeah but you just run it and um, it's <coughs> full advance and then the spark happens before the piston comes to tdc yep. which allows the petrol to burn correctly yes. in the cylinder mm. um, rather than wasting power and, and some of it going out oh, the exhaust okay. pipe as uh, okay. as unburnt fuel now on to back to the electrical uh, thing i was going to ask you a quick question there now there is obviously a battery that stores the energy what you yes. um and what's that six volt is it rob or uh no this is 12 volt this is 12 yeah volt. it's 12 volt yeah sorry i'm trying to squeeze right. around because we've got another lorry we're going to get to in a minute uh, and, uh, so it stores it in there and uh and you could turn so how do you stop it overcharging then 
you literally watch the um, so if you've got the lights on you'd be on and charging um, if you're if you you know if you've used the headlights and forgotten to turn the uh, dynamo on then uh, you can run it without the headlights and you watch the ammeter basically oh, okay. so as the am amps drop um, that means it's not pushing as much um, charge, current, into, charge the into the battery and it's more full you need to be on it because if you leave it on it will cook the battery yeah that's uh, what I was thinking and overcharge it effectively oh, okay. um, Right, yeah. so drive wise, straight down, uh, is there a prop shaft or yes. anything? Yes, it's kind of interesting because you, if you look underneath and then forwards a little bit and your back, yep. um, you've got the flywheel and clutch here. Oh, yes. Which is separate to the gearbox, which is there. And you've got the charging unit there. That's it, yep. How bizarre. So the original charge unit um, would have been chain driven, and the chain sprocket is there. That's a more modern system. Yep. Um, using a more modern dynamo and a, and, a, uh, and a pulley, but it does the same thing. Yeah, and you've got a, what, a PTO brake there or something? Yeah, where you was looking, just behind the flywheel, is a clutch brake. Okay. So that disc there. That's yes. a clutch brake, okay. and then you go through the transmission, yep. and then unlike a modern vehicle, this only has brakes on the rear wheels. It, does have, it doesn't have front brakes. Okay. Um, and it goes back, and then you've got a transmission brake which is operated, that's this one here, Right. which is operated by your um, foot pedal. Yeah. And the handbrake actually works the drums like all oh, cars would do. Your back the that's shoulder. okay. Okay, yeah, I'll see London Deliverable Daily on the back there. And you've got that's quite it. a nice little setup on the back there, haven't you? Yeah, we've done a, um, a fake load on there, so we've got some straw. Um, these ropes came from Chatham Dockyard, they're ropery, so it's proper hemp. Yeah. Rope. And these bags, see that makes oh. them. See there. Rob's, um, Rob's promised me a bag or two. <laughs> keep that between me and you, though, anyway. Right, Rob, before we bore the viewers, well, I'm going to be bored, but let's move on to the next bit. Shall right, we? so, Rob, you've got some more history about this you're going to tell me about, haven't you? So, back in uh, back when this was supplied in 1920. Can you come round here a bit, Rob? Yeah, the sun's going to sun. kill me otherwise. Back in 1929, when this was supplied, uh, the government did a uh, did a scheme where they would um, give you a grant towards purchasing a new vehicle on the proviso if they ever needed it for war or, or um, oh, okay. war use or um, state use they would come and get it and you would lose it forever and you wouldn't get it back so you got it as a discounted price effect yeah. the government paying into it and that's actually what happened with this lorry um, 10 years after when it was supplied in 1939 the government came along and they said we're seconding that for war duty mm. and then the cab was taken off of it they put a much went back to Leyland had a much more modern cab put on it well modern for its day you know, 30s cab yeah. with uh, enclosed doors and it had a Coles crane put on the back now I've got photographs of it really? yeah, from back in the day when it looked like that and it was used for uh, recovery as a recovery yeah. vehicle um, and it was only after then, um, when after it was sold back into civilian life, that it went and worked for a bit longer, not much longer, into the 60s where it entered preservation. Um, and oh, there are oh pictures my. of this in, I think, 1968 or 66 on the London to Brighton historic commercial vehicle run um, before it was done like this. Well, that's what I mean. Back in the day, they used to sort of like have a history to a lorry and it went through several stages of its, of its work in life. Mm. Unfortunately, nowadays you buy a lorry, it lasts for two years and it's it's in the yeah. scrap bin next in two years' time, isn't it? So, yeah. whereas yeah. these are a, a, stead, a, a test of time. Yeah, they have, yeah. So, um, right, Rob, I'm definitely going to end this one on this video, <laughs> this one here. Now we're going to move on to a military vehicle. So, right, Rob, still in this seat. <laughs> And I just don't know where to look next on your uh, your property. Right, so what do we have here then, Rob? So, yeah, you've moved over a bay now. So this is a 1941 Chevrolet G506 yeah. uh, American World War II uh, lorry. Um, part of the Lend Lease scheme, like they did with the tractors. Oh, really? Uh, in 41, uh, obviously America had entered the uh, war as in Pearl Harbor had been attacked. Yeah. Um, but they weren't involved directly with the European theatre of war. Dunkirk had happened for ourselves, mm. so we'd come back, little ships went and rescued all those people, the yep. French um, and our British, uh, the BEF, the British um, Expeditionary Force, got them all back, as many as we could, um, off the beaches, but we lost a lot of equipment. We lost more or less all of it. It was left there, blown up, um, destroyed or sabotaged by ourselves so it didn't fall into mm. the hands. So America, not being directly involved uh, in the European theatre yet, 
um, supplied us with various vehicles that we could use. Um, you know, as the, as the war went on, mm. you entered then into the Battle of Britain. Um, you know, and then the uh, the Blitz, um, and then the war went on over here like that. So this is for 1941, and was supplied lend lease scheme um, over here for for use by our army um, until. In 44, uh, Operation um, Overlord, or D-Day as everyone knows it, but everything was D-Day. Yeah. It was Operation Overlord. Um, we went back over and um, and uh, started the fight back over into France. It went over then at some point because it was back in the early 90s, it was found in Holland. Oh, was it? Um, and it was, yeah, so, I mean, after the war, they were, America never took anything back, like that Jeep that you see earlier on, mm. they didn't take things back because of the shipping costs. Right? No, but, and but they were obsolete at the end of the war anyway. Yeah, I mean, they was left in barns and... Yeah, uh, or they were sold off into civilian life. Um, so this is quite a basic one, it's a cargo truck, and as you can probably see down the yep. side of it, it's got the... I've got the canvas on at the moment because we actually drive it out into the... Uh, we, we drive it into the uh, field, me and my daughters, and we'll go and camp in the back of <laughs> Really? Yeah. But isn't that great though? Because yeah. you can't buy that for kids, can you? No. I know you have done, but you know, yeah, them experiences, different. you're not going to get, oh yeah, you know what I mean? To have a childhood like that is mm. phenomenal. Mm. Right, I can see you better now because we're I'm out the sun. Yep. No, yeah. you're not, you're at worst, as a matter of fact. So, we've got a few tools on the side here anyway, haven't we? Yeah, so that's a standard um, a, a fit out for, um, I think they call them ditching tools or something like that. You've got a pickaxe, which is that's the handle for, there's the head, there's the um, American style round faced um, um, shovel, spade, yep. and then an uh, axe for felling trees. Um, but they, they fitted those to, the, uh, to Jeeps, do they fit into all, all sorts of things? Mm. Mm. Um, yeah, I can't remember what the actual name of it is really, the, uh, that, that section. But you've got a twin wheel jobby on the back, so it carries a load at all, doesn't it? Yeah, the, it was basically, um, it was uh, classified as a one and a half tonne vehicle, and it could carry one and a half tonnes in the back of cargo, and it's four wheel drive, so it's off road. Um, it's quite usable, it, it travels quite happily along at 40, 45 miles an hour. Um, engine inside is a straight six petrol overhead valve four litre. Yeah. Um, and the vehicle itself, being a Chevrolet, part of the GM group, is very similar to the, what you call the Jimmy, which is a lot more of them around, which is the six, six wheel drive version of this. Um, looks all the same, had a four and a half litre and a five speed gearbox in it. Um, and was classified, I think, as a two and a half ton vehicle. It's just got an extra axle down there, um, six wheel drive versus four wheel drive. Numbers wise. Let me just, I'm going to stop you there because I'm going to, the back. sun's going to appeal me. If you, we swap directions, you go down that end because that sun is glaring you straight in the eyes. That's better. Still yeah, yeah, yeah. So numbers wise of these vehicles, they, uh, they produced about 86,000 of them. Oh my God. Um, as opposed to the Jimmy, the six wheel drive version of it, the GMC, which was over half a million. So these are quite rare. They don't, you don't get them as much. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's, yeah, they're, they're a bit more rare. Mm. Um, yeah, I just fancy something that wasn't the, the usual, you know, but it's not too big that you can't store it. Well, I'll say store it, oh, I've got a barn for it, but um, yeah, we use this quite a lot in the summer. Uh, kids sit in the back and we'll go to the shops and it'll go down the beach and sometimes we take the canvas off and it's just got the troop seats in the back there. I've used it for weddings. Um, oh God, yes, I never thought yeah. of that. The wedding must be quite... Yeah. All your equipment, everything's good for weddings these days. Yeah, and, it is, yeah. And it can pay for itself because these ain't cheap for vehicles to no. own and maintain and look after, are they? Yeah, so you've got four miles to the gallon on the Leyland and this does about ten. <laughs> you know, so it's not much better. Yeah. Uh, and a modern engine. So what sort of engine inside it you probably did say? It's a straight six petrol. Uh, petrol straight six, again? Um, yeah, GMC, um, four litre. But uh, it's six volt electrics all still. Really? So yeah, kept it all original. Um, so when was the transition from sort of like from petrol to diesel in the military? Not long after this. Really? Yeah, yeah. I think the one, the model that came after this in the American Army was the Rio, I think, and that had a multi-fuel diesel engine in it. So you could put a multitude of different uh, um, fuels into it. Uh, made it more versatile, but a lot mm. more, um, a lot more uh, usable, and obviously uh, more efficient. 
Mm. So yeah, I mean these were old hat at the end of the, the war that the, the, the uh, technology come on a lot further. Mm. I mean we, we spoke about crawlers in other videos. I mean mm. I, I know one particular an international crawler where you start one side of the engine was petrol and the other side was diesel sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, it's international so, BTD6. You start crazy. it on petrol and then you flip it over and it goes into diesel mode. Yeah, which is yeah. a bizarre sort of thing. And, yeah. But, mate, it's just uh, a collection that you can never believe. I mean, I'm so proud of you letting me come and view your collection because it should be on main channel TV, personally speaking. But, <laughs> uh, and you've promised I can come back again because uh, next time I'm more prepared because I was expecting one or two vehicles let's yeah. put it this way and uh we've not got through half of your vehicles yet yeah, we've so the steam engines out there i mean you filmed it before the stationary engines. engines yeah yeah all the other bits and bobs I've, I've got all restored yeah so there. as i say it's a pleasure to talk to you and thank you on behalf of me and the viewers for letting me film you yeah. and tell us the history of not only you, yourself but your family as well yeah I mean, your granddad that started you off on Mechanically Wise, and we got him to thank for that as well. So tell yeah. us his name again. Uh, granddad who just passed away, that was Bob Thompson, um, and my dad, Barry Andrew, and then uh, my other granddad, who was the draftsman during the Second World War, uh, is uh, Fred Andrew. And your name is? Robin Andrew. Robin Andrew. And uh, I appreciate your time and everything. And don't forget, welcome. viewers, give him a thumbs up for me. I much appreciate it. Cheerio for now.